This weekend through next, a very special show is crawling into town. You may remember the beloved children's book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Well, the Rose Theater has invited the only company that has the rights to make this popular book come to life on stage. Lindsay got a behind the scenes look today. Jen, so this production goes on this weekend and next weekend here at the Rose, and I have to tell you, it brings these children's books to life. I'm joined with Jackson Fala. He's one of the two puppeteers that, oh my gosh, you guys work so much magic on the stage. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, what we have here and what you're going to teach me how to do. I'm going to play puppeteer for a very, you know, quick second. Great. Well, we have the flies, and... They move quite uh, quite simply, so you get it between your thumb and your finger. Okay, because you're kind you're of fluttering. Finger, and you're just spinning it. Okay. Spinning it and trying to keep it somewhat, and just the, the faster you can get him moving, the more like a flutter. Can you tell that Jackson has been doing this a lot longer than I have? I'm not very good at this. But so, what story is this in, and, and why are these little flies so important? Well, this is in the Mixed Up Chameleon, which is the second of our three stories and the longest one and they're important because the chameleon needs to eat them so he's constantly driven by his hunger and he wants to eat them but then he gets next up so at the end when he can't eat that's where the moral of the story comes in so these guys play an important role fantastic well the moral of this story is that you're going to want to see all these three shows here at the rose take a look <laughs> For a short time, the Mermaid Theater of Nova Scotia is making the Rose at Omaha its home. To bring to life some favorites from beloved children's writer Eric Carle, including Little Cloud, Sparkling Green, The Mixed Chameleon, and a childhood staple. This is the story of the very hungry cat. When you read these books, you read them as a family and you interact with each other and the book, and we want the play to be like that too. Only three people make the clouds, animals, and dozens of puppets move through the hour long show, sometimes using magnets or contraptions. It's all set to narration and music. A lot of it is very, very choreographed. I mean, one of the interesting things about this show in particular is it gets done in up to seven languages. And so the narrator changes, but the music is always the same. So we actually use the music more than the narration as a guide. There are lots of times when someone will start a move and then the other performer or me will take the puppet from them and carry it through to the offstage. After the show, they answer questions from their fans in the audience. What's your question? And they even let our big kid crew in on some of the secrets behind the show. The way they make that magic happen, black lights. The performers are completely covered in black. I think this is the first time I've ever interviewed anybody in a ski mask. <laughs> <laughs> completely covered. You get used to it. One thing these performers say they never get used to. Performing for 900 kids who are just loving what they're seeing is unreal. Is hearing the happiness and reactions to kids seeing their favorite story live on stage. For Upfront at Four, I'm Lindsay Thies. Some shows have sold out, but there are still some available, so you can learn how to get tickets by looking for Lindsay's story at KMTV.com. And Lindsay was telling me, which I think is cool, that they tell the kids that if they know the stories, they can say it out loud really? well, and so talk kinda, about kinda interact, get, interact with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah so very cute for yeah. sure. It's cold out there again. It's cold, believe it or not. We're under our frost.